Hey guys, still traveling, so I'm gonna be posting a lot of clips from the podcast here. But this clip is definitely one you need to watch. It's with Kevin Williams, who's the CEO of Balls.co. And in this clip, he talks about basically everything that you need to get your e-commerce business to seven figures. So make sure you watch it till the end. And if you wanna see the full interview, it's linked in the description. So yeah, let's get right into it. What are some of your brand's tipping points in terms of marketing and driving traffic? Oh, we're in one right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, is, uh, with, with leaning into the content first TikTok strategy is absolutely driving a ton of traffic. Wow. Um, now the, the, uh, the objective isn't getting the eyes, it's figuring out how to execute on them. Yeah. Um, when, it, when, when I became involved in the brand, one of the obvious things that I looked at was doing like direct placements on Barstool Sports or um, Chive or something like that. Mm. And they're heinously expensive to do with, and they're just like top of funnel stuff. Right. Here we, what we've done is we've created our own format for that and now we can play with it. And with you know, 50 million views, like we're getting the eyes. Yeah. So now it's, it, it's figuring out how to gently overlay the product on top of it. Um, you know, the market landscape has changed so much. It's like, I'm reluctant to talk about previous brands because what yeah. worked in months ago, pre iOS, um, just doesn't work at the, at the moment. So, um, I certainly beat my head up against the wall, um, in the early days, trying to make it work. A lot of people did. Right? Yeah, for sure. Trying to make it work. We have good first party data tracking in place. We use North beam for the record for really figuring out what, um, what's happening in the channels and now we know but now we know for sure it sucks not just maybe it sucks yeah no 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 it truly really sucks so um yeah there's a lot broken over there and things that were scale points before aren't scale points now um we are leaning heavier into um top of funnel like brand awareness in terms of pr um in terms of we, we are not doing any traditional media yet we can't really afford that but mm -hmm. Like eventually you might see us doing traditional media because our content's really funny. Right. So it could definitely I know that be doesn't directly answer the question. It's just it's 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 hard to say um, what is going to work and 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 what isn't the, at, at the moment. I think the point is maximize on the traffic that you have, and um, that's going to be different for everybody for different reasons. Right. No, that I think that's a great answer, and I think. Again, just looking at your strategy right now for TikTok, you can see exactly like what you're talking about. Um, and I'm really excited to see where that's going to lead even like a few months down the line, like when it's summertime and, you know, people are even more looking towards, you know, grooming and stuff like that. Um, so that's going to be really cool. Now, I have another question that was from my audience that's really good. It's what are some resources that you'd recommend for people that are starting to build their own site slash brand? I think you mentioned a few of them, like EOS. I, I, that was more for hiring. Well, that's stuff, just, but. that's leadership. Like, if you're a one-man band, like it's good yeah. to have an idea of what you're doing, but at the end of the day, your life's a checklist. Mm -hmm. um, in that perspective, the, the, the one thing, like what's the one thing I have to get done tomorrow, today yeah. for tomorrow, like that snowball thing, it's, that's like, you know, old man on the hill stuff, but it's, it's like super it's important. Good. Make sure <laughs> yeah. what you're focusing on is the right thing to focus on. Um, you know, as you know, as a, as a drop shipper, it's never been easier to, to stand something up. It's never been harder <laughs> yeah. to, to, to grab eyes. I think authenticity is everything. And I really want to convey that, that wow. like we are not just an entertainment company like we're making people laugh about something something that's a that is actually a serious topic it is men feeling good about themselves like you know having a, a robust sex life like these are important things and we joke actually we don't joke this is like dead serious like yeah. we care about your balls more than you do like seriously <laughs> i have the best customer service people ever like we will that's go amazing. to the ends of the earth to like support people i always gesture like this probably should yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're like supporting customers um and i i hope that authenticity comes across yeah and we resist the transition to the, the the temptation to be highly transactional unless you have a highly transactional product 
Like if you have something that requires building brand identity and brand depth, you really have to build to dive into it and be authentic. And that's like a pain point for us because of what I was saying about like message continuity earlier. Yeah. Like now if I'm like, okay, now bye, 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 bye. Like that's not the right thing to do for the brand. Like right. you have to find, find cleverer ways to, to engage that way. Um, and TikTok in particular, and I do think the jury's out, like people are making a gazillion dollars, but it's really hard to identify them individually. Um, yeah. You know, there's a lot of anecdotes and not a whole lot of, uh, a lot of ground truth for a lot of people. Um, but they're being very authentic. They're not overproducing. Um, you know, I would say in TikTok world, or we get away with our stuff being overproduced because it's funny. Yeah. But most people are being super authentic. Um, and like being honest, like little brands that are not even little brands, brands out there that are, that are like, they have drops, like larger catalogs with drops. They're in a niche area and they have like interesting drops that happen. So, um, mini Katana. Is oh a, yeah. You know, I've seen that brand. That brand is so, so cool. It has a million plus followers and it's all about like anime and it's a, it's a, like a frenzied niche community and yeah. it does these like clever little teasers about whatever anime character that's about the sword is going to drop and that gives him a reason to talk to his audience that they care about that they identify with like he's very very good and it's very authentic he's a young yeah. guy like it, it it's it is authentic he's not just like fabricating this to make it work right he doesn't spend a dime anywhere else he doesn't have to right Definitely. So how do you lean into what your brand is to make it authentic, to make an authentic conversation? So that's not a tool so much. It's more of a, a, a mental focus. Yeah. Um, as far as the actual tools, the things I always recommend are um, basic data set. Like if you don't understand Google Analytics and what Google Analytics uh, GA4 is going to do, get thee to Udemy and buy a course for freaking $15. Mm -hmm. Like $15, that's all it costs and learn about how to use the data. Like I clearly have a data orientation, but it just shocks me how many people in this industry have no idea how to use like basic data. Yeah. Understand how people are interacting with your site and you can come to conclusions about how you're going to iterate on the site. And it's like a few hours and 15 bucks, you have no excuse. Um, you know, basic Photoshop skills. Like, you know, I am not a graphic artist. I'm like barely can draw a straight line. <laughs> But I'm pretty functional in in Photoshop and Illustrator, and it has saved me so much money and so much time over the yeah. years. Because I'd be using an outsourced graphic designer, it takes 24 hours to do whatever resizing or color saturation change or whatever, and just being able to tweak that stuff and do it myself, like okay, need to resize this, need to change it in a different format, bam, 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 like it's done, it's up, and I get to move on with my day. Like watch out for blockers in your schedule. And again, 15 bucks on Udemy, learn the basics of Photoshop. Like this stuff is so accessible. It's crazy. Yeah. Or use GIMP. You know, I hate GIMP, but like yeah. use GIMP and, and so be it. Um, websites, you know, basic Shopify is fine. Shopify has a lot of weaknesses, but it, its ecosystem is so strong mm -hmm. as far as being able to plug apps in cautionary bit about apps is that they can really screw up your performance long term and make your life really hard but as far as getting off the ground it's so easy to get off the ground yeah um other tools uh microsoft clarity um everybody talks hot about hotjar which does screen recordings and user recordings clarity is free i mean you're paying them by giving them some access to your data and it's like hotjar premium on steroids really? and free yeah so Hotjar's, hot, I have nothing but warm, fuzzy feelings about Hotjar. I mean, good company, good guys, like whatever. But Clarity's free. And that's, that's cool. I've never heard of that. I don't know how. I've used Hotjar, Lucky Orange, all these things. Yes. Yep. And Clarity marched in and they're like, oh, cool. We can give this away for free and use it as the data collection mechanism for other nefarious things. And, yeah. You know, really. Whatever it is they do with it. Yeah. Bill Gates isn't going to care about your data, I promise. Um, yeah, so those are some tools. Wow. 